solemnly swear I am up to no good. And that's because I'm using the Marauders map to bring you through the 20 must-dos of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and Universal. Everything you have absolutely got to do in this area, we are checking out today so that you don't miss a single thing when you visit Universal. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter is a Harry Potter themed area in Universal Orlando. There are actually two lands that fit into this section, a land in Universal Studios and a land in Universal's Islands of Adventure. In Universal Studios, you've got Diagon Alley. Islands of Adventure has Hogsmeade and Hogwarts. Both are absolutely amazingly themed lands, extremely popular as you can see from the crowds, and with so, so, so much to do. If you want to see absolutely everything that you can do in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, you can check out Emma and I's video where we try to do it all in one day. But this video is for if you've got limited times, the things you must, must, must do. Now, we're going to need to be on the lookout today because, as you might know, Emma and I have a bit of a conflict with a Mr. Harry Jay Potter. Is his middle name James? We have a conflict with him. Uh, we are bounty hunters looking for him over the animal abuse charges after he killed Jaws the shark. He is uh, looking for us in return. It's a whole thing. I know. Um, but we just have to avoid him while we're here. Usually we avoid the Wizarding World pretty heavily for that reason. Can't today because I got to share the, the must-dos. But you know, just something, something we got to keep an eye out for. If you see Harry Potter, you shout and I'll run. Hogsmeade is going to be our first half of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. This is the Universal Islands of Adventure half, and it is the original Wizarding World of Harry Potter. This land opened first before Diagon Alley and before the upcoming new Ministry of Magic and Wizarding Paris section coming to Epic Universe, the new park that is set to open in Orlando in 2025. Uh, shameless plug. We will, of course, be covering everything up at Universe leading up to and when it opens. So keep an eye on All Ears next year for that. We are right outside our first must-do, though, with Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. This is widely considered the best ride at Universal, period. It is also uh, considered one of the best rides anywhere, period. It is very, very well loved. This ride takes you on the magical flying motorbikes from Harry Potter into the Forbidden Forest, out to the Care Magical Creatures classroom with Hagrid. And you see a lot of magical creatures. There are lots of surprises on this story coaster. It is thrilling, it is fun without being too intense. Absolutely a favor, as you can see by that two hour wait time, which is pretty typical. If you do want to ride this one, I highly recommend stopping by very first thing in the morning. If you want to see what this looks like, you can watch any of our perfect day at Islands of Adventure or Universal Orlando videos, where we typically start the day with a ride on Hagrid, since it is so, so, so much fun. The big thing about this ride is you do have to fight with your family about who gets to ride on the motorcycle and who rides in the sidecar. Motorcycle, a little more fun, but both are a blast, so certainly a must do. Um, and just as a note, this is not available on the Universal Express, which is the Skip the Line offering here. So if you have Express, Hagrid's is not available. Strolling through some of the back alleys of Hogsmeade, we come out and spot Hogwarts Castle. This is obviously the most exciting part of the Wizarding World, is that Hogwarts is here. It is amazing, spectacular, jaw-dropping, so beautiful. They do projection shows on Hogwarts sometimes. It is such an amazing theming detail, and there is a ride inside. Now this one's a little bit different because the ride is actually not going to be our must-do. It's just gonna be to explore Hogwarts. So the ride is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. And though it is very fun, and I think a must do if you can do it, it is also incredibly motion sickness inducing. So um, even for folks that don't typically have motion sickness, it can be a rough one. If you want to skip it, I think it's okay to skip it. The ride is cool. You see Aragog the Spider, you go down to the Chamber of Secrets, you fly on the Quidditch pitch. There's lots of fun on the ride, but it's not gonna make our must do list because of that motion sickness factor. However, even if you aren't riding Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, you absolutely have to walk through the queue. The queue takes you all throughout Hogwarts. It takes you under the castle to see the Mirror of Erezed, the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom, the Gryffindor common room, Dumbledore's office, with amazing details from the films. It feels like walking the halls of Hogwarts and is hands down one of the most magical experiences you can have in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. For a Harry Potter fan, it's one of the absolute best things that you can do here and something you absolutely must, must, must do. Now, at the end of that queue, you can either hop on the ride and go for a spin through more of Hogwarts or you can chicken exit, which is where you ask a cast member if you can exit right before boarding the ride and they will certainly direct you to the exit. When I was younger on my first visit to the Wizarding World, I rode this over and over and over again like eight times. Now I cannot do that. 
but I still walk through the queue every time I'm here and ask to exit if I'm not feeling up to it or I ride the ride. If you are spending your day in the Wizarding World, you do need to grab breakfast. Now, breakfast in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is going to be found at either the Leaky Cauldron on the other side or here in Universal Islands of Adventure, you can find it at the Three Broomsticks. Breakfast, surprisingly good, especially the pancakes. I'm not a huge pancakes person and I love the Wizarding World pancakes. They have the full English breakfast, they have the American breakfast, both great options. There's typically a bit of a line in the morning, so just be prepared for that. And breakfast stops getting served around 10.30 a.m. So you're gonna have to do it early if you want to grab breakfast, but it's a great option. If you don't feel the need to have a full sit-down breakfast, you can always grab something like pumpkin juice as a fun reference to the books or movies, where you get to taste that delicious pumpkin juice. Emma loves this stuff. You can get it on tap or in bottles. Um, to try out during your visit to the Wizarding World. Regardless, having a little bit of Wizarding fare to start your day is a must-do. Our next must-do is one you can do on either side of the Wizarding World, and that is wand shopping. So to do this, you're gonna start by heading to the Ollivander's Experience. This is a short show where you go in a small group into Ollivander's Wand Shop, and one of the Ollivander's Wand Shop employees will pick someone from the audience to do a wand, uh, to wand chooses the wizard ceremony. This is really cool. Typically a kiddo gets chosen, but sometimes an adult gets chosen. I have seen Emma chosen for this experience. And you get to do a little magic as the wand chooses the wizard. Now, even if you or your kiddo doesn't get chosen for the Ollivander's experience, you still want to head into either Ollivander's Wand Shop in Diagon Alley or the Owl Post here in Hogsmeade for you to shop for your very own wand. If you are chosen for the Ollivander's experience, you can buy your wand, you don't have to. And if you're not chosen, you can speak to the folks working in the Owl Post and they will help you find what wand chooses you. That's actually what I did as a kiddo. And I still have the wand that a wand shop employee helped pick out for me. Even if you don't plan to purchase a wand, because they can be pricey, if you get the prop replicas or the interactive wands, they can be on the pricey side. Even if you don't choose to purchase, I still recommend wand shopping because there are lots of different wand designs. Many are prop replicas of the wands in the films or interactive versions of those wands. And they're definitely worth looking over because they are so, so neat and well designed. That brings us to our next must do, and that is to do some magic. All around the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, there are spots where you can do magic with the interactive wands that you buy here. This is so cool, and even if you don't buy a wand, maybe hang out around one of these magic spots to see someone do some magic. But you're basically going to look for little symbols in the ground, and then you can cast spells to make effects happen in the different windows around the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I found Emma for our next must-do. Here she is, and she's actually demonstrating this must-do. <laughs> Which is to drink a, I don't know what she's doing, but it's, it's to, cold. It is cold. It's frozen. It is frozen. I'm drinking a butter beer. That's your next must-do in the Wizarding World. Yeah, you have to drink a butter beer in the, in the Wizarding World. This is absolutely a must-do. I did this every time I came to Universal for a long time after I moved here, and then I had an intervention with myself, and I was like, we have to stop. <laughs> oh, I've not had that intervention. Oh, you're still doing it? There are three different types of butterbeer. There's frozen, there's cold, and there is hot butterbeer. Hot, hot butterbeer used to be seasonal only, but now it is available year round, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, you can get it at a number of locations in both sides of the Wizarding World. You can get it pretty much like anywhere. Two walk-up carts and Islands of Adventure. You can get it at the bars, so Hogshead over in Islands of Adventure, and then over here at Fountain of Fair Fortune and Hopping Pot, you can get the butterbeer, plus Leaky Cauldron three broomsticks, and the two walking carts over there. But when you get butterbeer, uh, something that I will always recommend is to look for the shortest line. Especially over in Islands of Adventure, the lines get really, really long for those walk-up carts, and they will be really short inside the Hogshead, which is also a walk-up bar that you can go and get butterbeer, and the line will be much, much shorter. So just check out the lines, because if you can get butterbeer in a shorter line, save you more time, more wizarding time. While we're standing here in this doorway alcove, um, and I still have Emma. Let's talk about another must-do, and that's called Wizarding Brew. <laughs> do, 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 do. Uh, if you guys have seen my must-do for all Universal, um, she does a weird thing about a war. So this is that. It's weird that I did that shortly before. It's really strange. Anyway, this is the Wizarding Brew. This is the Daisy Root Draft. There are five different Wizarding Brews. There used to only be three. 
but they just dropped two new ones. I'm very excited because the Wizarding Brew and in general Universal's exclusive beers are one of my favorite things about Universal in general is that they have amazing exclusive beers for even their specialty events like Halloween Horror Nights and Mardi Gras. They will have exclusive beers from local breweries or Floridian breweries that are made just for those events and go away at the end of the event to never be seen again. And which is, she feels a really strong passion about one in particular Halloween Horror Nights. I'm so upset that I can never, I hope they bring back a similar beer next year. But the beers are amazing. As a beer drinker, I absolutely love drinking the exclusive beers at Universal. My favorite one, I know that this is a Harry Potter video, but my favorite one's in Jurassic World. Don't tell anyone I told you that in this video. Tell, the, for, tell them you learned it from a different video. But um, this beer is really amazing too. The Daisy Root Draft is my favorite of the Wizarding World beers. It's one of the new ones. It's the lightest beer you can see. It's got a pretty light color, pretty light taste, but all of them are tasty, even all the way to like the Dragon Scale, I think is the darkest one. And that one I love as well. So they're all really amazing. I recommend trying at least one of them if you are a drinker. And if you're not a drinker, stick to that butter beer and just check out some of the theming in the bars because specifically in the hog set over in uh, Islands of Adventure, the hog actually comes to life sometimes. The bartenders are really friendly. So check out some of the theming, but that's gonna be a must do. Now this next must do is one that you can technically do on both sides of the Wizarding World, but I recommend doing it while you're spending time in Hogsmeade. And that is to go sweet shopping. So Diagon Alley has Sugar Plum Sweet Shop, but if you're a fan of Harry Potter, you know that the real sweet shop, the one where it's all at, all the sweets, is Honeydukes. You can find it here at Hogsmeade. It is a pretty large shop um, right here, and they have tons of wizarding sweets. You can find chocolate frogs that actually have wizarding collectible trading cards inside. You can find Bizzing Wizbees and Jelly Slugs and Pink Coconut Ice. There are so many fun wizarding candies. And of course the theming's amazing. I have not had the jelly slugs. My favorite thing to buy here are the Birdie Bots Every Flavored Beans, which you can find in a couple of different packages, but these are truly every flavor, like snot flavor, uh, earthworm flavor, earwax flavor, uh, plus things like cherry or fruity tutti. These are super fun for lines. I love playing a game where you pick out birdie bots for each other and just hope that you give your friend the gross I ones. I lose every time. Yeah, I'm, Emma's really bad at picking out the good ones. If the prepackaged sweets are not your jam, you can also head over here to the bakery case, which has more wizarding sweets like butterbeer fudge, cauldron cakes, pumpkin pasties, lots of different options here too. But you have to go sweet shopping, get something sweet. I reckon the birdie bots. Even if you don't want something sweet while you're in the park, it makes for a great souvenir. Um, I have a lot of chocolate frog cards at home. One thing that Universal in general does very well is live entertainment and street atmosphere, which is anytime you see entertainment out in the streets around you. And the spot to check that out here in Hogsmeade is going to be at this stage in front of Hogwarts Castle. This is absolutely a must do is to see the students perform. There are two shows that happen here. You can either see the Frog Choir, which is an acapella group augmented by singing frogs, or you can see the Durmstrang and Bobaton students during the Triwizard Tournament come and show off some of the flair from their school. And you can't miss them. Whether you're walking by and you see that one's about to go on or you check your Universal app for the next time, grab yourself a nice wizarding drink, come on over and enjoy an amazing show. And though we've kind of toured the must-dos of Hogsmeade, there are a whole lot more must-dos. That's because this is only half of the Wizarding World. And some would say it's not even the good half. So both halves are good. Don't, don't listen to me. Both halves of the Wizarding World are good. The other one's wonderful. And let's head over to Diagon Alley. But to do so, we actually have to do another must-do. And this one's tricky. So to park hop between the two parks, you can take the Hogwarts Express. This is an attraction where you ride on the Hogwarts Express between the two parks. It is an actual mode of transportation, but it's also a very immersive ride where it feels like you're actually on a train between London and the hills of Scotland, passing iconic Harry Potter locations and characters out the windows. It is a blast, it is a must do, but the catch is you do have to have park hopper admission. So if you only have one park admission for the day, you will not be able to ride the trade over to Universal Studios. Studios, you have to have admission to both parks to be able to ride it. They will scan your ticket, which is how they get you. But if you are spending the time at the Wizarding World and the train's important to you, you're gonna wanna do that park hopping ticket so you can go to both parks. So let's get riding on the train because the rest of our musties are over at Universal Studios. We have made it to Universal Studios, the other Universal Park and the home of the other Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Now, when you get off the train, you'll find yourself at King's Cross Station obviously, because that's where the train goes. 
platform nine and three quarters. But once you exit the station, you'll find yourself in London, which does actually count as part of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Now, London is going to be another of our must-dos, the must-do being explore it. There are a lot of fun hidden details, fun interactions you can have in London that you might not think about because you're so focused on heading into the more magical parts of the Wizarding World. A couple hidden details to note that I definitely want to point out. Right here on the sidewalk, you can see Screed and Sons Bookshop and the door to the Leaky Cauldron. Of course, you don't only really spot this if you're magical. Muggles tend to overlook things, kind of a thing. But uh, yeah, the story here is the Leaky Cauldron, which is pretty neat. Closed up right now. But you know, that's probably just off hours. I am not a muggle. This phone booth is super fun. You can dial magic and hear the Ministry of Magic message. And you can find one of the actual night buses that were used in the Harry Potter films and typically talk to the shrunken head and night bus attendant here, which is a super fun interaction as well that I highly recommend. It's a great picture. And the night bus attendants and the shrunken heads are always super fun to talk to. Hey guys! Hello. What's up? I just was wondering, I know you guys are emergency transport. What yeah. about non-emergencies? Hey, listen, that's up to the person. <laughs> you know, like, we get someone, you tell us where you want to go, we go there. Okay. We're not asking about the status. <laughs> like, we're not going to judge what is and isn't an emergency. You're not qualified to do that? <laughs> nah, man. Like, uh, I'm not going to get all up in your business about it. I I'm like that. I'm not going to be like, technically, this isn't an emergency. Like, <laughs> there's a protocol. Like, right. Hey, like, is yeah. there anything broken? Yeah, yeah, right. Is yeah. someone after you? Is it? No, like, <laughs> Actually, yeah, it's, no. it's even better if we don't know those. No, I, I feel like I feel like you might want to know if someone was after him. That might become a problem for you. But again, but then they're right? not held accountable. No, yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah. As no. I completely oblivious. That's how I like to live my life. That's and a, my yeah, afterlife. It's fair I'm enough. Completely oblivious. One of the best hidden details in the London area is that there is Grimmauld Place, 12 Grimmauld Place, which is the home of the Black family. And if you look on the second floor, you can sometimes see Creature peering out, looking out at the folks walking by. And if you're looking for a snack, I highly recommend stopping by the London Taxi Stand, which has the jacket potatoes. These might be a weird one if you're here in the summer in Orlando, but they're super filling, super amazing loaded jacket potatoes. My favorite being the shepherd's pie jacket potato. Point is, London has a lot more to offer than you might think before you actually head into the Wizarding World proper. And just a pro tip, a lot of folks wonder, like, how do you get to Diagon Alley? That is the Wizarding World in this park. How do you get there? Well, I'll show you. Basically, to get to Diagon Alley, you can head through any of these doorways on this wall. They all seem kind of unassuming, but that's on purpose. You certainly cannot see the Wizarding World from London. But if you head through, you'll hear the sound of the bricks moving out of the way and find yourself in Diagon Alley, which is also the home of the rest of our must-dos. Now, Diagon Alley, typically very, very crowded. It's definitely going to be a spot to take pictures. It's got beautiful theming, tons of hidden details in all the windows. And our next must-do when you first arrive in Diagon Alley is you want to watch the dragon breathe fire. There is this dragon on top of Gringotts Bank as kind of the, like, centerpiece of Diagon Alley. She's beautiful, she's glorious, and she's angry because she's just escaped from captivity, as I'm sure we all are. Now, if you ask the wizards in Diagon Alley, the team member wizards, when the dragon breathes fire, they'll tell you whenever she wants. Whenever she wants is usually every 10-ish minutes. I see a dragon breathe fire like that, I'm like, time to go. That dragon's angry and I don't want to be burned alive. But everybody here tends to stand and watch. And that's, you know, uh, your prerogative. Now still, I said that, but we are headed to Gringotts Bank anyway, towards the dragon. Maybe not the brightest move, but what are you gonna do? And that's because there's a must-do here. And this is perhaps one of our biggest must-dos on our list, so we gotta talk about it. Gringotts Bank, the building with the dragon on top of it, is home to the ride in the Diagon Alley side of Wizarding World of Harry Potter. This is Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. This attraction is one that takes you on a ride on the minecarts through Gringotts Bank uh, to a vault of your very own, although things go a little awry. As it turns out, not only are Harry, Ron, and Hermione there intro infiltrating Gringotts, but Voldemort, Bellatrix are there, Nagini. Things get pretty dicey, I'll tell you. And it's a super fun story coaster. So you've got roller coaster elements, you've got motion simulator and projection elements, beautiful scene elements. It's absolutely an extremely popular ride. It tends to have a long wait. 
There is a single rider line, which I can recommend. And just be warned, like many universal rides, you cannot wear a bag on this one. If you have it around your hip, you're fine. But if it is around your shoulders, you do need to leave it in one of the complimentary lockers while you ride. Not an overly intense roller coaster as universal coasters go, so it should be pretty good for the whole family as long as you meet that height requirement. But it is a coaster nonetheless. It does have screen elements and motion simulator elements. So something to be aware of if you're going in with a little bit of motion sickness. Leaky Cauldron and Three Broomsticks have similar menus. They serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner with options like fish and chips, banger sandwich, uh, the plowman splatter, which I really loved here, toe in the hole, lots of British offerings. Now, are they going to be the most authentic thing in the world? No. But is the food pretty good? And as universal food goes, really good? Yes. The breakfast here are awesome as well with traditional English breakfasts that maybe aren't so traditional, plus pancakes and American breakfast as well. Pretty tasty food, amazing theming, definitely worth stepping inside. Um, both Three Broomsticks and Leaky Cauldron are great options for this. They have slightly different menus, some specialty drinks on both, uh, specialty food. But you can check out the menus in advance to decide which of the two you want to experience. I do recommend experiencing one of them as they are both fabulous experiences. And they do have amazing theming that are worth stepping inside to see even if you don't eat. Our next must do is another one that you can do in both sides of the Wizarding World, but I will say I think it's a little better in Diagon Alley, and that is photo shoot. Whether you are wearing your Wizarding World robes or not, I do recommend doing a photo shoot in Diagon Alley or over in Hogsmeade. But Diagon Alley has a lot more great things to take pictures in front of. Like these stewed and jelly deals. You don't want to take a picture in front of that? Why, why wouldn't you want to take a picture in front of that? Still, the backgrounds in Diagon Alley are absolutely beautiful for pictures. There are lots of amazing photos that you can take around Diagon Alley to make it seem like you're part of the Wizarding World, whether, you're, again, you're dressed in your robes or not. Now, Wizarding Robes, you can buy them. They're rather expensive. They're $70, $80 in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. However, there are some cheaper options that you can find online. And in fact, we will link some in the description that we have found with All Ears Style, our style brand, to help us take some pretty darn cool Wizarding World pictures. In fact, even if you're not taking super exciting, fancy, robe-wearing Wizarding World pictures, you should take some selfies still because there are amazing scenes in the Wizarding World and you want to remember your time here. But if you do want to get extra fancy, you could head to Shutter Buttons. Shutter Buttons is a spot where you can actually get moving Wizarding World portraits made of you and your family. Stepped right inside here in Diagon Alley and you can get these moving portraits made. It's also a cute little themed room, but it's more about the Wizarding portraits that you can get made where they do actually move just like they do in the movies. Um, this is a pricey option, but if you are looking for a one-of-a-kind souvenir, one to remember your time, especially if you've got little kiddos, then this could be a great option. You should also see a famous Wizarding World performance. I know we talked a little bit about the performers over in Hogsmeade, but there are some pretty famous performers here in Diagon Alley. The students love to put on a show, and that's, that's swell and great, and you definitely need to see it. But you should also come see the famous wizarding players, as well as famous wizarding artist Celestina Warbeck, a favorite of Molly Weasley herself, both of whom perform at the stage in Diagon Alley. You'll find the stage off to the right side of Diagon Alley, and right now it looks like the tales of Beetle and the Bard are about to happen. This is a wonderful show with puppetry, magic, and a great story, the tales of Beetle the Bard, which you might know if you're a fan of Harry Potter as the origin of Harry's invisibility cloak. It's a great show, there's tons of amazing effects, and I highly recommend stopping and seeing it. It's about 10 or 15 minutes long, and if you see it happening while you're walking by, just stop and watch it. It is so, so, so spectacular. The performers are amazing, and the story is a great way to sort of immerse you in the world of the Wizarding World. All right, we're gonna sneak in here to Sugar Plum Sweet Shop to talk about our next item on the list. It is very important, and one that you can accomplish in Hogsmeade or in Diagon Alley. You need to shop till you drop, whether you actually plan to spend any money or not. Now, I used to always buy something when I was in the Wizarding World. I think the merch is so spectacular, but you don't necessarily need to buy something to shop around, you know, window shop, shop with your eyes. The Wizarding World merchandise is amazing and there is so, so, so much of it. And it's located in these incredibly themed stores. This store, which is Quality Quidditch Supplies, even has a moving Chudley Cannons poster above the fireplace which is amazing. Um, but you can shop around for Quidditch gear in here, house apparel, if you know your Hogwarts house. 
line is Slytherin. Um, maybe another reason why Harry is targeting us is because I'm a Slytherin, I'm as a Hufflepuff, and I guess that he just wants to come after us. There are actually some actual screen used costumes in Wizarding World, including this one from Madame Hooch, the Quidditch coach. But lots of amazing merchandise throughout the Wizarding World and lots of amazing theme stores. So whether you actually intend to purchase a souvenir or not, you got to stroll through the stores. One of my favorites and a fan favorite probably is Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, famous in the books as the store that Fred and George open together once they graduate from Hogwarts. And you can see it is many floors. There's fireworks through the ceiling. You can buy your own uh, pygmy puff here and name it. They do a whole announcement and naming ceremony if you do that. You can buy... Uh, wizard pranks like extendo ears and even the candies from the wizarding world like nosebleed nougat or fever fudge so just some amazing options in here as well a visit for me to universal whether it's focused on the wizarding world or not is not complete without strolling through the wizarding world stores and checking out what they might have to offer you might be surprised by this next must do especially considering the fact that uh, we're bounty hunting harry potter and he could be hiding here but you gotta head to the wrong side of town. There is a part of Diagon Alley that is often missed because it seems like it might be a team member only area, but it is in fact open to guests. It is called Nocturne Alley. Nocturne Alley is of course kind of the darker side of Diagon Alley where dark wizards go to trade their dark wizard magics. And it is an amazing walkthrough area. Uh, it's always nighttime here, which means it's always cool. Almost like it's air conditioned, but you know, that, that can't be what it is. There isn't a lot to do in Diagon Alley. You can do some magic back here, some really interesting spells you can cast. And one of my favorite Wizarding World stores is back here called Borgen and Burks. This is a store you see in the films and books that Harry goes to sometimes, uh, usually when he's kind of out of the way of where he should be. But this is where you'll find some Death Eater merchandise, some interesting prop replicas, and just some more apparel options souvenir options that you can check out. I definitely recommend stepping in here. I think that I need this bookend. I've been thinking about buying it for literal years at this point. What if I did? What if I did, you know? Or Lucius's cane, what if I did? That would be crazy if I just bought Lucius's cane, right? Please don't let me buy that. Some fun hidden details in Borgen and Burks. Uh, this is the vanishing cabinet, which they use to travel in the later books and movies. And you'll know that they test the vanishing cabinet using a bird. And if you listen closely, you can actually hear a bird tweeting inside the vanishing cabinet. There is also the chest that Barty Crouch Jr. uses to trap Mad-Eye Moody in Goblet of Fire here as well. And you'll see that it is shaking. Uh, I don't know why. Hopefully not because somebody knows inside it, but it is shaking. I can't stress enough that you need to check out Nocturne Alley. I think it took me a while on my first visit to realize that I was allowed to walk back there, and it is so neat. So please check out Nocturne Alley. You can find entrances by Leaky Cauldron and here in the very back of the land by the bathrooms. Here's Fountain of Fair Fortune, one of the spots we talked about buying butterbeer. But we are talking about our second to last must do, Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor. This is perhaps my biggest Wizarding World must do. Florian Fortescue's is where you'll find wizarding ice cream, both soft serve and hard pack, with some flavors you might be used to, as well as some more unique flavors like butterbeer, strawberry and peanut butter, or my personal favorite, the toffee apple soft serve. I am not a huge soft serve ice cream person, but I love Florian Fortescue's soft serve. I think it is so spectacular and amazing. I get it almost every time, and when I first moved here, I would drive all the way over to Universal, park my car, walk all the way in here just for Florian Fortescue's ice cream. The line for Florian Fortescue's is often long. Don't let it deter you. It is worth the wait. I sing the praises of this. It's my favorite ice cream that you can get anywhere, and I stand by that. I still haven't had anything that beats it. I know that my family really loves it. My brother craves the toffee apple soft serve, and it's one of his like must-dos when we come to Universal. So try it out. Absolutely a must-do. In fact, like outside of the rides and butterbeer, probably my biggest. Now our final must-do is kind of a simple one, but a very important one. And that is to take in the sights, look for some hidden details. There is so, so, so much beautiful artistry in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Things that will call back to the books, things that called the movies spectacular, wonderful artistry. There are sounds that you can hear that will make you feel immersed in the Wizarding World. Listen, some people speak personal tongue and some don't. 
and it's just so much to do that it can be hard to remember to look around and see some of the details. I see something new almost every time I'm in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and I'm here quite often. So our final must do is to take it slow when you're in here. It can be hard if you're rushing through your Universal trip. You have so much to do in Universal, it can be difficult, but take some time, 30 minutes even, to just walk around, read the signs, check out the details, see the owls moving in their perch at the owl post. There's so much to see, so much to experience, and I don't want you to miss a beat of it. Hopefully this video has helped you with those must-dos in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. If you liked it, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now, go watch our must-dos at Universal Studios. I'll see you there. Bye!